Hey, welcome back to Mistake Man. So here is my model of the USS Defiant. This is a continuation of the last video where I went over all of the progress that I've made on this model so far. And I started talking about all the lighting. I've done a lot of lighting work on this model. And I started talking about that in that video, but it just got to be too long for one single video. So I decided to break out the discussion of the lighting into its own video. So that's what you're watching here. I'm going to go over the processes um, that I went through and um, I there's a lot of lighting circuitry in here. Unfortunately I've already glued it together so I can't open it up and show you but I did take photographs along the way. So I'm going to kind of go through a slideshow um, about halfway through this video. I'll go through a slideshow describing what's what I did inside and how I built up the lighting circuitry. So without further ado, let's talk about some lighting. All right, so for the lighting, of course, I've got all the green strawberry clear plastic pieces in there for the bus arts, for the deflector, and uh, the blue piece in there that you'll see in a minute. The These things, whatever the heck they are, and then these blue circle things. So I've got all those in place. Um, for the impulse engines, the green strawberry kit didn't come with any like clear plastic red pieces to go back there, but they did come with these little like cylinders, these gray cylinders that have the like fins on the inside. That was uh, just out of, out of that gray green strawberry plastic. Those did come in the kit, and they were they were just open in the back. And then there's a photo etched, like little grill. Let me shine some light back there, so maybe you can see that. See kind of that brass circ little ring with uh, rays coming out of it. I don't know, little supports coming out of the ring. That's a brass photo etched piece from the green strawberry kit. But then there's also I put just a, a thin sheet of polystyrene plastic in the back i put some like gray smoke colored uh let's see here pardon my arm this uh tamiya smoke it's like a transparent paint like dark colored transparent paint i just put a couple of coats of that over the because the polystyrene sheet was white, of course, and I didn't want it to be white back there. I kind of wanted it to be dark, so I put a couple coats of that smoke over it, so it still lets light through, but it doesn't, uh, no, I just, I like the way that looks. And then, so yeah, when I turn that on, there's, there's a red LED behind there that lights that up, so you'll see that. Um, let's see, I also drilled out holes for the windows along the bottom here. And the green strawberry kit, the photo etching does come with some templates for where those windows go, which is just awesome. You just basically put the template on there, fix it on somehow, and then you can mark where those holes are and drill them out. I, they're not 100% screen accurate. There's a few of them that are not quite in the right spot. I did try to fix that myself by just not using the templates from green strawberry and just doing my own. I don't know if those pieces from Green Strawberry are actually intended to just be templates to help you mark, or if you're actually supposed to put the piece on like you do with all these other photo etched parts. But if you did, they would kind of be, they would stick up or you'd have to like route out material behind it so that it'd end up being flush. I don't know what the intention is there. Um, I didn't want to have to put them on there. I don't know. I ended up, the issue, the issue is, is the windows, the holes for the windows are not molded in the original model kit plastic, but there are like little divots for where the windows are. They're like little like rectangular cuts, but they're not like, 
they have rectangular edges, but they're not just like little recessed rectangles. It's almost like somebody, they're like sloped as they're cut in. It's, they, they don't look good. They don't look right. They're supposed to be round. And so that's why I don't know if the green strawberry kit is just supposed to go over those and cover those. If you actually put the photo etch piece on, or if they're just templates to help you mark the place. But if you just mark the place and don't use it, then you've got to fill in those original divots that are cut out of the plastic. And that's what I ended up doing. Um, I didn't do a great job of it. I just used some Bondo. I think that, is that the brand? It's like a automotive body putty that I'd seen other modelers use. I think it might be Bondo brand. But I ended up using that. I'm not very good at using it. I'd never used it before. And so I don't know if I had the mix right because it's a two-part, I don't know if it's epoxy, but it's like a two-part thing. You mix the two pieces together and then you have a little bit of time to work it before it solidifies. And you can kind of see in a few spots where, I don't know if the light actually helps or, yeah, you can kind of see like, like right, right here, there's, you can kind of see the rectangular impression of where those molded window holes used to be. I tried to fill them in. I obviously didn't do a great job with that, but you'll see the windows were not at all in the right place. So anyway, I went through, most of them are okay but like some of them I didn't do a great job on. And some of them I ended up putting the, like the windows that were actually in the right spot. And so the round hole needed to go through the same spot where that little rectangular divot was. And so then I had to fill that in with Bondo, but then drill through it. And some of them chunked out. Some of them just like the little pieces of Bondo just popped out. So I had to redo them. It was kind of a pain. So at the, in the end, I, I just thought, well, maybe it would have just been better if I had just put those photo etch pieces on there and then just ignored the fact that they stick out a tiny little bit. I mean, just the thickness of that brass, which is not much, it's pretty thin. So maybe it would have been okay. It would have just blended in with just the panel look of all the rest of the panels on here. And then I wouldn't have had to deal with the stupid little divots that were in the original. If I could go back knowing what I know now after having tried stuff, maybe that's what that's probably what I would do. Let's just actually use the photo etch pieces. Anyway, so I've got the holes cut out. Um, I actually, I didn't want to just leave open holes because I don't really like the way that looks. I wanted them to actually have like little windows in them, like clear. So I've actually filled in each of those holes with uh, UV curing resin, this stuff. And just, you know, put a little drip in there and then shoot it with UV light to harden it. And that worked pretty good. It was, there, almost every single one of them tended to have a bubble in it. And so I had to like, get the bubble out of there before I cured it. So that was a pain. And the UV resin did start to dissolve some of the Bondo. So <laughs> when you light it and you look closely, there's kind of a pink tinge to some of the windows. Uh, not much I can do about that at this point. Um, so yeah, another reason why I wish I hadn't tried to fill those holes and it just used the photo etch pieces. But, uh, those are filled in. I just like the look better because it dif the plastic diffuses the light a little bit, so it's less directional. Because like I don't have a lot an LED behind every one of those windows, right? I have just like a a patch, a strip of LEDs kind of in one spot that's just shining light in that general direction. And so when you're looking at it from this direction, you might see where the light is directly coming out from the LED, and so it looks really bright here. But these other ones just have reflected light coming through, so they're gonna be a little bit darker. And so, I mean, there's not much you can do. I mean, there are things you can do about that, but only up to a certain point. One of the things that I like to do is to put that uh, UV resin in there 
it's clear, of course, that UV resin to, to fill in those windows, it kind of helps diffuse the light a little bit so you get, so even if you're looking at it from the side, you still see some light from that window. So, um, oh, and additionally, I added some holes for where the strobes go. So there's going to be a hole there. There were already some like little molded cylinders there in the original model. I just had to drill a hole through those for those two. And then there's one here at the front. That one, uh, I don't think there was already a thing there. I had to add that hole. And you'll see there's actually a little bit of fiber optic sticking out there. I originally did uh, fiber optics for all of these strobes. Um, but I didn't like the result. It was way too dim and it was too fiddly. I ended up going away from that in all of the instances except this one because this has the extra little, uh, I don't know, well, I don't know what they are, but they're kind of like little pipes that come out and then there's an extra little panel that fits over that. Let me pull it out. Okay, this piece here, and this comes with the original uh, model kit. It's a separate little piece that glues on right there and kind of just gives a effect of those pipes that are on there. So I drilled a hole in there for that fiber optic to fit through because that's essentially where that little blinky light is. So then I'm just going to thread that fiber optic through. Let's see if I can get it on there so you can see. There we go. So now we've got the little fiber optic going through there. And then I, these will go through. There's a couple of, there's a pair of holes back in there that those have to fit through. So essentially it'll be more or less like that when it's done. So now I've got the fiber optic coming through. Once that's glued in place, then I will cut that fiber optic back to the right length. And then I'll probably also fill in the hole with some of that uh, UV resin just to lock that fiber optic in place and help it spread its light a little bit more. But because I had to get the light from the LED inside up through that extra piece, that's why I still ended up needing to use the fiber optic uh, for this spot. But for all the other strobes, these two back here, and then there's these two on the top, and then one right here on the front. Uh, I got rid of the fiber optics and just ended up using an SMD that is just pushed up right against that hole. And then I uh, hot glued it in place so it just stays. So it's basically pointing its light directly through that hole, more or less. And it ends up being much brighter. I like the effect. So let's go ahead and turn the lights on and show you what that looks like. So I've got got it all wired up, of course. I've got this wire coming out that's gonna end up going through the base to the power pack. I'm using this power pack now for testing. It's just like a little, uh, it's got four double A's in it and it's got a USB connection and a switch on it, which is, I don't know if I'll end up using this pack for the final thing to actually power this when it's done, because I have to fit this into the base somewhere, and I haven't figured out exactly how to do that. Might not be able to get this one to fit. I might have to get a different one, but it'll be something similar. It's, it's still going to be four double A's. Um, but this has uh, been convenient for testing because it's got a switch, and then I just use this little USB that I, I chopped off the end of the USB and s uh, soldered on one of these little connectors. It's useful for my little electronics projects. And for this, I just, I don't have a connector on the end of this. I just plug it directly into the holes on this connector and it's good enough for testing for now. Okay, let's, uh, I'm gonna turn off the overhead light. I still got some light in this room. But I think it's dim enough to demonstrate. So let's switch that on. There we go. So the camera definitely washes out the lighting. 
you can see on the top here, we've got those blue little circles. Um, those will end up being having some additional paint. Really the only spots that are supposed to glow is the little dot right in the middle. It's supposed to glow blue. And then the very outer rim between the blue plastic piece and the original uh, piece of the hole there is supposed to glue in, uh, glow blue. Right now I've got that masked off where I've just stuffed down some some wire. So I'm like, I've got some really thin, I've just got some of this like really thin wire stuff. I don't even know, uh, 33 gauge, really thin stuff, uh, insulated wire that was perfect. It actually fit in there nicely. So I just packed it down in to that little, that little ring in between. So it's in there right now as masking. I'll only pull that out when I'm done. Um, so I don't know, so this is not a good representation of what it'll look like, but essentially these other rings are all gonna be painted gray um, once it's done. Then of course we've got these, which are really bright right now, but they are gonna have those little rectangular slats and ladders that go over them. So that's gonna tone down the brightness of that. And I think it'll end up looking just right. Then of course I've got my strobes, which are nice and bright. They flash really bright. They're a little bit brighter in real life than they are on the, shown on the camera, but there's those. I've also got these little things glow red. I just drilled those holes out, filled them with the clear UV resin, and then painted over with the clear red paint uh, on the inside. I didn't put any clear red paint on the outside because I thought that would just might, I might just make a mess of that. So. Then we've got some windows up on top. Got that strobe going. Got our bussards, which are very washed out. They look they look like a deep red on in real life. Let's see if I can adjust the exposure on this. There we go. That's more close to what they look like. Still not quite the same as what I see, but pretty close. And then there's the deflector. Again, really washed out. Let's see if I can adjust that. There we go, that's closer to what I see. And I've got the windows on the bottom. You can see those. So you can see there's, there's still some directionality, like there's a few spots where you can see where it gets a little bit brighter than some of the others, just depending on the angle you're looking at to where the actual LEDs are located. I could have maybe added some like white paint or something to diffuse those a little bit more on the inside. Um, I might do, I'll probably do that on future Star Trek models, but this is, this is okay. There's a few windows that I blacked out just because I, I, I kind of like the look of, you know, not all the lights lit up, that not every room in the ship is going to have its lights on all the time. So and then, of course, there's the strobes there. This one over here looks a little weird because it's got the whole uh, fiber optic sticking out for now, but I'll fix that once I get it all set up. And then there's our impulse engines, which are pretty, they're pretty dim uh, in real life, which I like. I didn't want them to be super bright. So let me adjust the, see if we can adjust the exposure. It's a little better. That's probably pretty close. And of course those warp engines. So you can see, this is gonna be hard to capture on camera because it just, keeps overexposing things, but you'll see there's just like a blue, that blue plastic rectangle goes in between those two sections there. You can kind of see it there. And most of the detail that's inside of these little, I don't even know what you call them, warp nacelle cavities are part of the green strawberry models but they did look a little bit too plain for my taste they were a little a little boring on the inside 
I couldn't find any good reference images of the studio model of what that actually looks like inside of there beyond what the green strawberry guys had already put in there. So I just kind of got a little bit creative and did my own thing. I just added some extra little elements. Kind of hard to see, but that, that kind of, I added like this, uh, I just cut off a piece of sprue and made it look like some piping or structural struts or something back there. I painted them copper just because I thought that looked kind of cool with that reflecting that blue light. And then I just added some extra little greeblies in there as part of like those little kind of cylindrical pipe shaped deals on the wall there. I added those. Those weren't part of it. I added some extra paneling just with some sheet styrene. And was that a photo etch part? I think that might have been a f extra photo etch part. Or maybe that was supposed to go in there. I don't remember. But uh, yeah, so it looks pretty cool in there in real in real life. It's oh, really hard to capture that on the camera, but it ends up looking really cool in real life. I'm pleased with the result. So, oh, and then of course I've got my little navigation lights here, green on this side. They're much more green than that in real life. They're not showing up quite the right color on camera, but Let's see if I can get it to focus on that. Anyway. Yeah, they're they're a nice green color than the ones on the uh, port side are red. Obviously, I've got some light blocking I need to do on that seam and just general seam work. Like I said, that's my next step is to clean up those seams, seal them up, do some more light blocking around those edges. Um, but overall, like I'm really pleased with the lighting on this. It looks really cool in person. I just, I love the effect of the strobes. It just adds that extra little bit of cool factor, like what you see on screen. So I'm really pleased with how this has turned out, especially since this is the first one I've ever done. Uh, first Star Trek model I've ever lit, added lighting to. And learned a lot of things along the way. There's some things that I would do different on my next one. Some things that I think will be better. Especially with regard to the windows. Um, but as far as the strobing, that has to have a circuit, a special circuit that makes them flash like that. And you can buy kits for that sort of stuff. Um which is a, f a fantastic option. I decided not to do that because I wanted to learn the electronics on how to actually build that stuff. So I just did some research, did some reading. Um, I have a little bit of experience from a class that I took, but um, also just did some experimenting with the breadboard and different components and figured out how to build my own custom flasher circuit. A few, I got a few different ones. So for this one, this is strobe. There, some of the Star Trek models have like a, like a nav light that it's, these these nav lights don't blink; they're just on all the time. But like for the uh, the Enterprise refit, they I'm pretty sure they blink on and blink off, kind of like in that sort of a frequency. And so where these are just like really fast flash. Um, there you have to tweak the circuits to get the to get them to behave differently like that so i kind of learned how to do both of those um i think one of the models that i'm really looking forward to building is the reliant i've always wanted to have build a model of the reliant i finally tracked down a kit of the original amt Ertl reliant model and i've got that in my stash and I'm, I'm working up i want it to look awesome i want it to be the best model I've ever built. So I've got a lot of learning to do along the way. So that's why I started with lighting the Defiant. I'm going to figure out how to do lighting with this. I'm going to light some other models for fun. And so now I kind of know what I want to do for the Reliant on the lighting. And I'm also learning painting techniques and seams. When I was building models as a kid, I tried to make them look good, but I didn't really have a lot of skills. 
And so I'm learning a lot of that stuff as I go, and it's a lot of fun. So, so there we go. So like I said, I built my own circuit. Um, I'll kind of go through that with the pictures and, and show you those. All right, so I want to talk a little bit more about what I did with the lighting, how I set that up. So I've got this diagram here that helped me plan out what different lights I was going to need and about where on the ship that they would be. And you can see I've got a couple different symbols representing different types of lights. They're all LEDs, um, but I've got a few different types in here. And so the triangles represent SMDs, just like tiny little chips. Six of those SMDs are the strobes that flash, and the rest of them, all the other lights, SMDs and all the other types, are just steady on. Uh, so six strobing and 16 steady on LEDs. Um, so of those steady ons, five of those are SMDs. Those are going to be here for the navigation lights on the sides of the nacelles. So that's four. And then the fifth one is this one that's in between these two red thingies on the top of the ship. That uh, And that one's, all the lights in here are cool white, except for that one SMD, which is a warm white. I just happen to like the warm light uh, better for enhancing the light that was coming through those red thingies. And then also I've got... Uh, two actual red LEDs for the impulse engine lights. And those two for the impulse engine lights are actually like bul LED bulbs that have like the little domed lens on them. There's two uh, filament LEDs that are like the, the COB or COB chip on board filaments. And those are for the uh, warp engines. And then there's uh, seven... Cobb strips that are in one section. So for the Bazard collectors, the deflector, and then four for the interior lighting for the windows and such. All the steady on lights are just wired in parallel with resistors that are sized for the how bright I want it to be and to make sure that I'm running all the LEDs below their rating. I don't want to push these past their maximum or really even run that close to maximum if I can help it just because I want these lights to last as long as I can because I if they burn out there's I mean I'd have to destroy the model to tear it apart I don't want to have to do that so the the blinking strobe lights are on a separate circuit uh, I designed the, the control board that helped makes those flash so I'll talk more about that later so here's a picture of the completed wiring inside of the model and it may look like a mess but there is a method to the madness that I think you'll see by the end. Um, we're looking at the inside surface of the top half of the model and the entire inside surface of the model I sprayed first with a layer of black spray paint for light blocking so that none of the light inside the model would get out in places that I don't want it to get out. And then on top of that uh, layer of black paint, I sprayed a layer of white paint for because there are going to be lights that I do want on the inside to help light up the windows and uh, the little blue circles and the, the red thingies in the back. Um, so I, I want as much light to bounce around and get to those uh, colored plastic lighted features as I can. So... So the board you see uh, in front here with the like circuit elements on it, the little the little chip and then the resistors and capacitor and stuff, that's the control circuit for the strobes. And it's got connectors for power and for six strobe, the six strobe SMDs. And the other board behind that is there's not really any like control circuitry or anything on that. It's just a, simply a power distribution board for all of the steady on lighting. So I've got one power connector coming in and then that power is being distributed to all the steady on lights. It was just a convenient way to connect all of those lights to a single power source. So here's a better view of the power distribution board. Uh, not all the lights have been connected yet at the time I took this photo. 
you can just see there's a few at the front of the board and then just one pair at the back. And it has a input power connector, like I said, toward the front of the board. And then the output power connectors for 15 lights. And the header on the right is connected to the positive power and the header on the left is connected to negative. So yeah, I've got 16 steady on lights in total and only 15 connectors. Uh, I originally had planned for 13 steady on lights. And so when I was putting the board together, I decided to add two extra connectors just in case. Um, but when I was putting everything together and testing it, I realized, realized that there was not enough interior lighting for all the windows. Some of the windows just ended up being too dim and I didn't like that. So I decided to add two more of the cob strip for the uh, interior lighting. And so that put me up to 15. And then at that point, the window lighting was adequate, but I didn't like how dim the the dorsal red thingies were. That's, that's these things here. So I added one more SMD um, that you can see here. It's actually lit. It's actually lighted here. So it uh, casts it li its light down onto the white interior surface of the bottom half, which then reflects up through the red thingies. And like I said, I used a warm white SMD because I like how it looked through the red. I didn't have enough connectors to add this final light, so I just bodged it onto the existing connectors, as you can see here. A little sloppy, but eh. At this point, the board was already glued into the model. I couldn't get access to the bottom to kind of add another header and make it look as clean as the rest. So I just figured, what, whatever, I'll just solder it onto the end connector there. Uh, for all of the strobing lights, my initial idea was to use fiber optics to get the light from the LED bulb out through the hole in the hull, but I don't actually have any real fiber optic. All I have is some of this 50-pound uh, test monofilament fishing line that I thought it might work well enough. And as you can see, I glued the fishing line into a tiny hole, tiny hole that I drilled into the tip of the LED lens. And then I ran the fishing line out through the hole in the hull and fixed it in place using some UV resin. And this looked okay at first. So I went ahead and wired up all of my strobes this way. And I needed to light block the strobes, of course, because I didn't want um, all of the rest of my lighting inside of the ship to flash every time the strobes flashed. So I gobbed on some of the light blocking uh, fabric paint. This is just a, like a, th a thick black acrylic fabric paint that I use for light blocking on the inside. So I gobbed that on just to make sure there were no uh, light leaks from the blinking strobes. And after I did that, unfortunately, the strobing effect was now really dim. And I don't know why. I probably just adding the black paint messed up the internal reflection effects of the, the quote-unquote fiber optic fishing line. Because fiber, the way fiber optics work is you're, you're bouncing light around on the inside using what's called total internal reflection, and that lets the light travel a long distance. And total internal reflection depends on the angle that the light reflects, and it also, I think, depends on the index of refraction of the material. So like for a fiber optic, it'd be the index of refraction between the material itself, glass or plastic or whatever it is, and the air, the outside air. Or in this case, I've added on that, that black fabric paint. I'm guessing it just changed the index of refraction enough to just mess that up. So it just became a lot dimmer and I wasn't getting as much light out. Um, and the, the, the blinking strobes were just too dim for what I wanted. I wanted them to be night, nice and bright flashes like they are on the ships in the show. I didn't like the result, so I decided to rip out uh, all of those fiber optic LEDs that I had set up and replaced them all with SMDs. And I just basically got the SMD and pointed it straight down through the hole so all of its light would come directly out of the hole. And you can see here where the original LED was when I pulled it out with all the hot glue that I used to attach it and the 
the black paint for the light blocking. When I pulled that out, it ripped up the, pulled up the, the black and white spray paint layers on the inside and left some big old holes in the paint there. So I had to go back in and fill that in with the light blocking fabric paint. So you can see in the model today as it is, there's some remnants of the original approach. I just kind of cut it out and there's lots of extra glue gobs, but since pulling up that glue ended up pulling up paint, I just left them alone as much as I could. And so you'll see there's just blobs of that stuff in there. So here's a closer image of the actual SMD that I'm using for the strobe, where I've just bent the wires so that the SMD chip beams its light right through the hole. In this image, you can see on the left and right side of the picture, there's uh, the impulse lights. Inside, it's a little hard to see, but inside, underneath that aluminum tape, I've got the cylinders that are the actual impulse engine, recessed impulse engine parts. To actually diffuse the light, I've got the some plastic styrene sheets. And then I didn't want the red LEDs to be right up against that plastic sheet, because then it would just be like a point source of red light. I wanted it to be more diffuse than that, and so I had to. I wanted to set back the LED from that sheet, so I needed to give it some distance, and also to make sure all of the red light goes out through the impulse engines and not out anywhere else. I decided to just make these cones out of uh, aluminum tape that would help reflect the light out and also block it from getting out. And so I've wrapped the aluminum tape around the plastic cylinder part and then kind of made it taper back to where the actual LED bulb is. And that bulb itself is covered with the black fabric paint that you can see. And then the, the two wires come out of the LED out of the back. And this is a one of the fully assembled warp engine boxes. And it's completely covered with aluminum tape in order to block light leaks. And aluminum is conductive. So be careful if you're doing something, anything similar to this, um, you have to be careful of shorts in your wiring when you're using aluminum tape. The actual LED lighting element here is a cob filament. And it's kind of like a, it's not flexible. It's a rigid little LED that has a whole bunch of little cob chips on it. They glow really brightly. You'll sometimes just see them, like multiples of them in like a traditional bulb shape to replace like a filament bulb. And I wanted to try that out and you try and use one of these here. And so uh, it worked pretty good. I routed a groove in the blue plastic so that the uh, filament would sit inside of that groove. That way it was as far forward as possible and that most of the light that was coming out of the filament would end up inside of the, the warp engine box rather than you know, being cast backward into the interior of the ship body. And then I secured that in just with putting a whole bunch of hot glue over it. But I did make sure that the contacts were not covered up with glue so that they could be soldered later. And here you can see the actual uh, warp engine box installed inside the body of the ship with the wire soldered on. And the I covered the hot glue that was uh, holding in the filament. I covered that with a layer of aluminum tape to uh, reflect even more of the light from that filament back into the engine box itself. There is some light that leaks from, that leaks inside of the, uh, the engine nacelle interior from the top and bottom where the wires are connected to the filament, but it's not really a problem. There's already interior lighting in there, so I'm not worried about it. And it's just, you know, cool white light like everything else, so I'm not worried about that light that's coming in. The rest of the lighting uh, that we have to talk about is uh, for the Bassard collectors, the deflector, and all of the interior lights, including the windows, are for this uh, type of cob strip LED lighting. And I've just cut it into little one inch segments like you can see here. And that's basically just wired up directly to the power. So for the Bassard collectors, I didn't want the light strip to be mounted directly on the red plastic I want it because then from the front from the outside you would just see like a bright line that would get noticeably dimmer towards the edges 
and I wanted the the Bassard collector light to be more diffused than that, so it was more just like a solid, consistent glow from the whole thing. And so the way I accomplished that was I kind of created a layered structure here where you can see there's the red plastic for the actual Bassard collector piece. And then directly behind that is a thin sheet of white styrene plastic for diffusing the lighting. And then again, I didn't want the light strip to be directly mounted to that I wanted it actually set back a little bit to diffuse it even more and so I built this little clear plastic box that just offsets sets that uh, light strip back away um, I don't know about a quarter of an inch here's a kind of a an unassembled view of what that looks like you can see there's the sheet of styrene that's already glued on to the red clear plastic of the Bassard collector piece and then there's a little clear plastic box that I just made from a sheet of plastic and I just cut and folded the, that up into a box shape and glued it together and then I mounted the LED strip behind that so here you can see it lit up so you can see it's that clear plastic box has set the light back a little bit and I just glued it all together with hot glue and the hot glue kind of melted the plastic box a little bit so that's why it looks a little bit warped and messy there, but it was good enough. It still looked just fine from the outside, as you can see here. Although with the photos, it's never quite exactly what you see in, in person. Um, but in person, it's a really nice, consistent, even glow that you get from that. The deflector is also lit by a cob strip. And the strip is placed at the back of the deflector housing, like you can see here to also provide interior light because there's some windows that are in that deflector housing. In fact, you can see two of the windows, one on each side here that I filled in with UV resin and I've scuffed it up on the inside a little bit just to diffuse that interior light. I've also got that uh, LED strip mounted at an angle on a blob of glue instead of pointing just straight ahead so that the deflector light wasn't too bright you can also see in this image the, the ventral strobe SMD for it's been light blocked. You can see it there. And here's another view. So you can see that deflector strip light mounted at an angle on that blob of glue. And then you can also see the windows in the top half of the deflector housing here and here. The interior lighting for the windows is from four of those cob strips. There's two mounted in front here to light up the windows here. And then there's two mounted on the sides of the warp engine boxes here to light up the windows here. Uh, the interior lights also light up these two red features, which on the exterior are located here. They're just like they don't glow very brightly, but there's just there's definitely some little red lights in the center of those circular features. And so the, the interior lighting that I'm using to light up the windows uh, also illuminates those. And it also illuminates the blue circle features, and it supplements the light coming through uh, the red thingies in the back. So before soldering and assembling any of the lighting, I first tested the strobe circuit and some of the other model lighting by connecting it all up on a breadboard just to make sure everything was going to work and to see about how much power I could expect it to drain. And except, except for the two red LEDs that I used for the impulse engines, uh, I didn't actually end up using any of these lensed LED bulbs that you see here. Um, most of it by the end was replaced by SMDs. And some of the re resistor values were changed to adjust for the SMDs and to also adjust the brightness after actually testing all of the lighting inside of the model. After designing and testing the strobe circuit, I had to figure out how to lay out the components and connectors on a prototype board. I had prototype boards that were eight centimeters by two centimeters. And so I used a program called VCAD to help me lay out 
the components and all the wiring. I accidentally used my last 27K resistor on another project. So on the final board, you'll see that uh, that resistor has been replaced with the combined 20K and 7.5K resistor. It didn't really affect the performance of the circuit in any perceivable way. So it was fine. This is only the second board I've ever assembled, so I'm pleased with how it turned out. The other side isn't quite as pretty, but it is much better than my first. I made back plates for the two boards out of sheet styrene and then attached each board with styrene rods and I hot staked those rods through the mounting holes of the prototype board. Essentially just took the rod and drilled out a small hole. I mean, not like all the way through, but just like a, a blind hole on the end. And then I used my soldering iron, just pressed the hot tip of the soldering iron into that hole and it just uh, hot staked where it just kind of flares out the plastic in kind of a mushroom shape that uh, just holds the board and keeps it captive. The back plates themselves were then glued inside of the model, like you can see here. So this is the finished lighting um, with a single pair of power input wires coming in through the hole in the bottom of the model. This input wire is a sturdy solid copper wire and I've secured it here with a cable tie just to keep it in place and then I just put a blob of hot glue to help protect the insulation where the wire bends around that corner. And then that power wire immediately splits into two separate pairs to go to each of the, the boards. It does look a little messy from this view, but I did carefully place the wires and secure them in order to to prevent blocking any of the windows and any of the other lighted features and so that it would close up nicely. And so I think once it, once it closes, it ends up looking a lot nicer. And here is a shot of the inside of the closed up model with the lights on. So once it's closed up, I think it actually ends up looking um, pretty tidy. And here's another shot where you can see the aft uh, interior strip, the interior lighting strip glued to the side of the warp engine box. And you can also see the bussard light. Overall, I'm really pleased with how the lighting turned out. It's probably over-designed, but I learned a lot along the way. All right, so this has been my adventures in lighting my very first model kit and I'm pleased with the results. I'm really happy with how it's turned out and I can't wait to finish it. So yeah, thanks for uh, coming along this journey with me. Um, I will be making videos of the rest of this build so it won't just be slideshows from this point forward. I'll actually bring you along and do recording as I'm finishing up the rest of the model. So uh, have that to look forward to. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.